Hello, and welcome to another ScrapeOps video. Today, we'll be going over how to set fake user agents using Node.js Axios. One of the most common reasons for getting blocked while web scraping is using bad user agents. However, integrating fake user agents into our Node.js web scrapers that use Axios is very easy. All the information that I'll be covering can be found in this article, Node.js Axios, Setting Fake User Agents. The link will be in the description. In this guide, I'll be going over things like what are fake user agents, how to set a user agent in Node.js Axios, how to rotate user agents, how to manage thousands of fake user agents, how to use fake browser headers, and lastly, the ScrapeOps fake user agent and browser header API. Let's begin. User agents are strings that let the website you are scraping identify the application, operating system, browser, etc of the user sending a request to their website. They're sent to the server as part of the request headers. Here's an example user agent sent when we visit a website with a Chrome browser. When scraping a website, we also need to set user agents on every request as otherwise the website may block our request because it knows we aren't a real user. In the case of Node.js Axios, when we send a request, it doesn't include a user agent by default. This will clearly identify that the request isn't being made with a real browser, which means that our request will be flagged as suspicious and websites will be able to easily block us from scraping them. That's why we need to manage the user agents when we use Node.js Axios to send requests. Using a fake user agent with Node.js Axios is pretty simple. All we need to do is define a user agent in a headers object and pass it into the headers attribute of the options of our request. Let's write some code that does just that. First, we'll set up a try and catch block that will send a get request and log the response to the console or catch and display any errors that may arise. Now, let's set the options for our request. We can set the URL to this website here, which is designed to return any information we pass in the headers of our request. Let's leave the headers field empty for now and see what happens. As you can see, no user agent gets returned meaning that servers will most likely flag us and block our request. Now let's see what happens if we define our user agent to do something like this. And now the user agent that we passed gets returned to us. However, when making requests at a scale, a singular repetitively used user agent may still get flagged and blocked. Let's look at how we could rotate through several fake user agents to try and prevent that from happening. Rotating through user agents is also pretty straightforward. We just need a list of user agents in our scraper and a system to pick a random one for every request. We can do this by altering our code just a bit. First, we'll store a list of user agents in an array. Then we'll define a general header with a user agent that is randomly chosen from the list every time we make a request. Finally, we'll pass this header into the headers parameter of the options of our request. Now let's run this a couple of times and see what happens. As you can see, different user agents are used for the different requests. The drawback of this method is that we would need to build and keep track of large lists of user agents ourselves, which can become very intensive. A better approach would be to use a fake user agent API to download an up-to-date user agent list when our scraper starts up, and then pick a random user agent for each request. To use a user agent API, we would just need to send a request to the API endpoint to retrieve a list of user agents. That could look something like this. The API would then send something back like this. For this reason, to integrate the fake user agent API, we need to configure our scrapers to receive a batch of fake user agents when the scraper starts, and then pick a random one from that batch for each request. Let's make some changes to our scraper to do that. To begin with, we're going to need an API key to access the API endpoint, so let's set that in a constant. Now, let's get rid of this list of user agents and replace it with a function that will send a request to our API endpoint, with our API key, for a batch of user agents. And then let's return the result of that response, which will be an array of fake user agents. Now let's replace our header definition with a function that will take in the array that we got from our API, and return a random user agent from that list. Finally, let's use these functions within our request to get a list of user agents from our API, and then define our user agent within our header as a random user agent from that list. 
Now let's run our scraper. There you have it, random user agents from different batches for each request. For simple websites, simply setting an up-to-date user agent should allow you to scrape them pretty reliably. However, a lot of popular websites are increasingly using sophisticated anti-bot technologies to try and prevent developers from scraping data from them. These anti-bot solutions not only look at the user agent of our request, but also the other headers a real browser normally sends. By using a full set of browser headers, we can make our requests look more like real user ones, and as a result, we can make them even harder to detect. Here are example headers when using a Chrome browser on a Mac OS machine. As we can see, real browsers don't just send user agent strings, but also several other headers that are used to identify and customize the request. So, in order to improve the reliability of our scrapers, we should also include these headers when making our requests. We could build a list of fake browser headers ourselves, or we could use a fake browser header API to get an up-to-date list every time our scrapers start up, just like we did for user agents. Using a fake browser header API is nearly identical to using one for fake user agents. The API endpoint could look something like this, and the response could in turn look like this. To integrate the fake browser header API, we need to configure our scraper to receive a batch of the most up-to-date browser headers when the scraper starts up, and then pick a random one from that list to use in each request. Let's make some edits to our scraper to do that. We'll keep our API key he up here because we are still going to need it, but we'll switch our first function to get headers list instead of just user agents and update the API endpoint too. We'll update the names in our function that get a random one from the list. And finally, we'll make some simple adjustments in our request to make use of the new functions and define the entire header instead of just the user agent. Let's run this and see what happens. And there you go, random up-to-date headers for every request. Throughout this video and in my own scrapers, I've been using the ScrapeOps API for the fake user agents and fake browser headers. The ScrapeOps API gives you access to the most up-to-date user agents and browser headers so that you don't have to worry about compiling and maintaining your own. You can get your very own API key and gain access to all of our resources by creating a free account with the link in the description. And there you have it, how to set fake user agents using Node.js Axios. If you'd like to learn more about web scraping, be sure to check out the ScrapeOps web scraping playbook, or you can check out one of our more in-depth guides like how to scrape the web without getting blocked and the ethics of web scraping. The links to those are in the description. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, be sure to drop a like, comment which topics you'd like for us to cover next, and be sure to subscribe for more guides on all things web scraping. See you next time.